Hi everyone and welcome along to our June hot kit tutorials. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you're going to enjoy what I have to show you whether you've bought the kits or whether you just want to come on and just have a moment of calm and, and enjoy watching a bit of potting up. But anyway I'm going to take you through step by step how to put together the June kits. So first of all we're going to start with our five pot tablescape kit. So in your kit you will receive five of these gorgeous terracotta aged pots. So these are slightly different to the ones that we've been using in previous pot kits in that they are sort of slightly lighter in tone, um, really good for summer, just a bit more sort of, um, yeah, just a bit sort of more summery in, in look and sort of feel. So in your um, five, um, five pot tablescape kit, tablescape kit, you will receive two white lavenders, which I've got one here, that smell amazing. You will receive a thyme plant, an oregano plant and a rosemary plant. And this kit is was designed to be used um, outside when you're, you're dining, you've got friends over or family over and you want to create a really beautiful tablescape to go down the middle of your table. Also to be kept indoors, um, obviously being mindful of watering and making sure that the plants get enough sunlight. Um, but yeah, to be kept indoors on, you know, on an island or on the side or by your cooker so that you can kind of cut the herds and use them in your cooking. So that was what, what it was intended for. So it's much similar to our other tablescape um, pot kits. You're going to start off with the ingredients that you get in your kit. So running out of space already. But the first thing you need to do is take your gravel, which you will have in your kit, and all you need is a handful to go at the bottom of each pot. need to do much. The gravel is purely there um, for drainage purposes, just so that the root of the plant isn't sitting in um, sort of water and um, so that it doesn't go um, mouldy basically. Okay, so the gravel is in all five of the pots. Then you need to take your plants. We'll start with, what should we start with? We'll start with the lavender. Um, it's really important to, to mention actually to give your um, live ingredients in your kit a really good drink. So give the plants a really good drink when, you, when they arrive, as soon as they arrive. Like don't leave them in the box for a couple of days or anything. Please open the box straight away. Give them a really nice drink. Um, the moss, which is in your um, kit as well, which comes in um, paper bags, um, you don't need to give that a drink, but if you want to give it a spritz, then that's great. That it all helps. Um, but yeah, definitely the plants. So you're taking the plants out of their pots and then popping it into the pot. So you'll see there that it's probably a tiny bit tall, mainly because of the gravel that sat in the bottom. So I'm just going to loosely, I might need a knife, but I'm just going to loosely tease the roots. wet so it's a bit trickier. You see I've just gently taken off a little bit of the root system there and then it does sit just a little bit better in the pot because you're you're sort of aiming for I would say a centimetre for the for the sort of the start of the plant underneath the rim of, of the pot because then that accommodates room for the for the moss that you're going to add at the end. So the pot will then need filling up with compost, which is also in your kits. So just around the sides, really. So you're just going to add in the compost, pushing it quite firmly down to fill that space. It smells beautiful. So once that's pushed down, you can then add in your mosses around the edge. 
Now the purpose of the moss um, is mainly for aesthetics, so it looks really lovely, it's really textural, um, it adds another um, dimension to the plant, to the pot, but it has a, a, an, another function in that it keeps the, um, the soil as damp as possible because it doesn't evaporate the water quite as readily in, in hot weather. That being said, it is really, really important to make sure that when you're watering your plant, which I would say do every two days, depending on the weather, of course, um, is that when you water, try and remember to water the plant and not the moss. So when the moss is sat around the, the plant, don't water that because the water then it, it struggles to get through to the root of the plant. So what you need to do is aim for watering if you can in the centre so that it goes straight down into the soil and then gets to the root system. Okay, so we're going to start with the moss. So in your kits you have two different types of moss. You have your sphagnum moss, which is this moss here, and then you have your bun moss, which is this sort of moss here. So I'm going to start with the bun moss, break it up. You might find it's a bit chunky as well, so you can take out that sort of root underneath the moss if you want to. And then you're then going to sort of add it around the edge of the plant. Granted, you're not going to see a lot of the moss, but it's just a really lovely way to frame your plant, to add a, a different texture, and just to add some interest. It looks more finished, I find as well, with the moss added. Okay, so that's the bun moss, and then I'm going to go with the sphagnum moss, which I'm going to tuck in the gaps like that. Okay, so that is one of your lavenders for your pot kit, for your tablescape. I will then do the rosemary. Again, it smells lovely. So the gravel's already in the pot. So again, just gently take the pot out after giving it a nice drink. You might find that the root, root system is quite embedded at the bottom, but that's fine. You can just sort of Take the roots off so that it comes out of the pot. Now again I can see already that this pot is bigger so it's going to need to be carved. So if you find that your plant pot is bigger than the pot that we've given you that's completely normal, that's intended. We want decent sized um, herbs and plants to get to you so that it's instantly beautiful so you don't have to wait ages for it to grow. But the only thing you therefore have to do is to carve the plant down so that it fits into your terracotta pots. So all you do is you take a normal knife, I've got a kind of like a steak knife here, and you sort of carve your plant into a sort of a point. So you're just carving the soil. You are cutting some of the roots, but that is fine. They will continue to grow. It looks brutal, but I promise with good watering and some nice sunlight, your plants will be absolutely fine. So you then end up with a sort of carved point shape almost. So we'll see if it fits. Probably needs a bit more off the bottom. So I'm probably going to take about an inch off the bottom. So you'll see all the root structure is still there. They'll just continue to grow. So that then goes in the pot. So that again is sat about a centimetre below the rim of the pot. Oh, there's a nice weed there, which you can just take out. The difference in dealing with plants over cut flowers. A bit of weeding. Okay, that's out. So there we go, let's just check. 
So then again, if I flip it around that way so you can see more of the soil there for the moss, you need to add your moss. So you start with your bun moss. And then finish with your sphagnum moss, which does tend to come with sort of twigs and leaves and pine needles, which again just adds all that more texture to your finished plant pot. So there we have the rosemary. Okay, so now I will go with the thyme. Another pot. So the gravel's already in, and again you'll see that the thyme plant is bigger than the terracotta pot, so this will need carving again. So again just take the knife and just carve down the soil. Again, this is definitely easier if you've given your plant a good drink. The soil holds its shape a bit better so it's easier to cut. Okay, and I'm going to take an inch off the bottom as well. Okay, perfect. And that sits beautifully in the pot. Again, we're going around with some moss. You'll see, you don't, again, you don't need that much. And then the sphagnum moss. And the gaps. oregano. So now let's move on to the thyme, which actually has started to flower these tiny little delicate sort of purple flowers. This root system is quite embedded. But yeah, just to sort of reiterate, please don't worry about the pot being smaller than the actual plant. It's easy to pot on. So you're just again carving into that sort of pointed shape to mirror the terracotta pot that it's going into. And then again, I'm just going to take an inch off the bottom. Which can sit. It's so pretty. And then in with your moss again. And then your sphagnum moss. I quite like it when it sort of trails down over the side of the pot. That looks really nice. And if you're doing it on a tablescape, say for example, if you're doing it outside or if you've got people around for dinner, you could always save some of the moss to sort of almost dot around the, um, around the pots just to tie it in. Okay, now we've got one more lavender before we add the thyme twigs. So 
So again with this one, I might actually just cut with the knife, just probably three quarters of an inch off the bottom. So it's slightly smaller, although taller, it's slightly smaller in terms of, um, of width than the other plants. And then what I'm going to do, I'll just use, just use some of the compost that you have in your kits to fill in down the sides, make sure it's nice and compact. If you find you've got sort of bits in your lavender that are a little bit sort of straggly, you can always cut them off. Depends on how neat you like your plants to look. I personally quite like them a bit more rustic, so I'm going to leave sections on and then add your moss in. And then after the bun moss, again the spathen moss. lovely so that's all five plants potted now so what I'm going to do now is add in the thyme twigs that come in your kits so these are dry thyme and you don't have to add these in if you don't want to but I just think that they add a really really nice um, texture right find some space where there's not compost so with the twigs you're just sort of breaking them down you can be as wild and rustic as you like or as sort of pared back as you like it depends on how much you like to add in. So they just go in your pot so simply. There's no rhyme or reason to them. You just put them wherever you like them. And their purpose is just, again, just to add a lovely bit of texture to your tablescapes. You might find actually with the time might not need any, but I'll add some in anyway, just so you can see what it looks like. Maybe actually with the time plant, you go in with the sort of more woodier ones and leave the greener, um, greener stems to the other plants. You can just gently tease the plants as well, just to make them relax a bit, but they will just, they will relax out um, after they've been watered and once they settle into their pots. We tend to use these in all of our kits, these time twigs. I think they add, they add something. I think it takes it from being just a potted plant to being sort of a centerpiece, something you've really created and thought about. So just adding them in, sort of weaving them in amongst the plants as much or as little as you want. Okay, and there we go. There is your potted five-piece tablescape. Now I'll move this out of the way a few more to get through. Okay. So now we'll move on to 
to the lavender trio. Okay, so I've just had a quick tidy up just so that hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing now after I've just done the tablescape. So now I'm going to move on to the um, white lavender trio pots. So in your kit you will receive these gorgeous, um, they're, they're the resin dipped um, terracotta pots. Um, you will also receive your gravel, which you can pop in just at the bottom. Doesn't need a lot, just a handful. And then your white lavender plants. Now again, as with the, the tablescape, you'll find that the pots, um, the, sorry, the plants, are slightly bigger than the pots. Now this is not at all a mistake, it's completely normal to sort of break down a plant so that it fits into the pot. So you take the pot out, the plant out, sorry, of the pot, and you'll see it is too big. So if you pop it in, you'll see, big so all you have to do as with the uh, five piece tablescape is you just carve the lavender down so you're just cutting part of the root structure and part of the soil it's absolutely fine it grows back with some a good drink and some lovely sunlight it will be absolutely fine So then you've just sort of shaved off. You've still got that root system at the bottom. You've just shaved off some of the soil and the root. So that can now fit into the pot. So pop it down. I'm going to take a little bit more. If you find that there's too much gravel in the bottom, it may actually be worth, if you're finding it's not fitting, taking some of that out. I'm just going to take a centimetre off the bottom, just that. Now that should hopefully, that should hopefully fit, yeah, a bit better. Like so. And then you can add in your moss. For this one, I'm going to mix it up and I'm just going to put the sphagnum moss in this, in just this one. Just to do something different. And hopefully the plant will just relax and just look beautiful and rustic in your pot. Now for your next one. Take the plant out of the pot, shave it down again. And again, it's just so much easier to do this if they've had a good drink. Taking off some of the bottom and then planting that in the pot. It smells so lovely. And they're just starting here to come out into bloom. So for this one, I'm just going to use the bun moss. And then for the last one, I'm going to use both. Just as a way of just doing something a bit different. You might find that you have lots of moss. I always make sure that everyone's got enough in the hope that you will have leftovers. So don't be surprised if you do have leftovers in the moss. Um, hopefully you'll find something that you can use it for. That's another one with the bun moss in. And then the last one. the 
and sew it into a point. And then just taking off a little at the end. Firmly push it into the pot and cut up this little thing that's just come off. And then with this one, I'll do a mixture of the mosses. So we have the bun moss, which is the sort of rounder moss, and then the sphagnum moss, which is the kind of a looser sort of um, variety of moss. Okay. And then after a really nice water, they are ready to go. So that is your trio of white lavender. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the kitchen garden pot kit. So the herb pot, the large herb pot kit. Um, this is one of my absolute favourites. It's a really lovely sized pot. Again, in that kind of summery aged terracotta, um, and we're going to fill it with beautifully scented herbs and some lavender, and of course all the mosses and the thyme twigs. So again, as with your other pot kits, we'll go in first with some gravel, just at the bottom just to stop the roots from sitting in water and then this is a kind of a case of playing around a little bit in terms of working out how much soil needs to go in whether you need to sort of reduce the soil on the plants or not so I'm going to take this time out which is again with the other kits started flowering it's lovely and then I'm just going to see where it kind of needs to be. So the way I designed this pot is it, it's almost into thirds. So you're aiming for each third to have the plant in. So I know that by that, putting that plant in, it needs probably a, a good couple of inches of compost, which again comes in your kit. Just to bring the plant up to level. So compact that down and let's see where it sits now. Yes, there we go. Okay, so that plant, I'm just going to sit it like that. I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to carve it. And then I'm just going to add in the lavender, which I have already carved down. So this one I've carved into a point already. Okay, don't worry, this is not how it's going to look at the end. And then with the, uh, the oregano, Again, add that in. Okay, so you'll see obviously that they all need carving down all the plants. So if I moved up to the side, we'll start with the oregano. So again, much like the other um, plants in the other kit, you're simply carving the roots and the soil into a point, just so that they can fit all together. And then you'll then um, fill the gaps with more compost. Okay, so that's now in a sort of point sort of shape. So if I just leave that there. I've already done the lavender, so I'll just do the thyme. Carve that into a point. work out where you want the front or if you want it to look all round. So for me, I'm going to go with the lavender there, then I'm going to go for the thyme with it near the front. 
and then add the oregano at the back. Now as this grows and um, settles, it will relax. It won't look quite so sort of upright, standing on my tiptoes over the top of it. And then you need to add into the gaps your compost. Making sure it goes right down. And that it's nice and compact. The other thing you can do if you want to is add, you know, the, the soil from the pot because that will also have, um, um, possibly will have some gravel in there. So that's really good drainage. Often um, you might find there's quite a lot of nutrients in there from when they're planted at the nursery. So by all means use the compost that's in your kit or if you want to add the plant compost you're more than welcome to do that as well or instead of. Okay. So this part's a really good size. It fits a lot in, it's a 29.5 centimetre across pot. So it really creates a beautiful statement centerpiece. Okay, so those are all planted now. And as I said before, they will just relax into each other. But I find what really helps kind of merge all the plants together, make them feel as if they're meant to be planted together is to add in the thyme and the moss. So I'm going to start with the bun moss, which is this one here, the kind of lovely green um, round moss. So then I'm going to add it into the sort of the three gaps where your plants meet. And again, when watering, I know I've mentioned this before, but make sure you water the plant, make sure you water, ideally in the center, give it them a really good drink every couple of days, especially if it's hot outside, um, and especially if you're keeping them outside. But in, in the same token, don't let them get um, waterlogged. Um, now I'm going to add in the sphagnum moss. And again, it looks so nice, so pretty, and it's just sort of hanging down off the side of the pot. And then lastly, it's a case of adding in your thyme twigs. So these can go all over the pot, you can go in between, right in the center. You don't have to push them into any kind of water source because they're dried. So don't worry if you just, even if you just rest them in, that's absolutely fine. They don't need water, they, they're just dried out and they'll continue to dry. Add in as much or as little of your time as you want. Let's put some amongst the lavender. And there you go, there is your large and herb garden pot kit. Okay, so the next um, part of your June pot is the Edelweiss, not Edelweiss, Hidcott uh, Purple Lavender. It's such a gorgeous, delicate lavender, a really delicate head um, and smells divine. So it's a really beautiful plant. So we're going to pop that up in this sort of slightly taller, it's a different shape, um, terracotta pot. Again, slightly uh, paler in tone and lovely for the summer. So I'm going to add in the gravel that you have in your kit, just go at the bottom, 
Now I think with this one, I don't think I'll do anything to the plant. It should fit. About right. Yeah. And then you'll go in with your compost that's in your kits as well, just to sort of fill in the sides around the edge. it down. So that's nice and fitted. Perfect. And then let's add in your moss. So we have the bun moss. Again, as I've said before, you don't need to use all of your moss if you don't want to. Um, you might find you have too much in your kit, so hopefully you can use it for something else, something else that you've potted in your garden. And mix that in with the sphagnum moss. Again, allowing some to fall if you want it to down the side of the pot. and then give that a really lovely water every couple of days depending on the weather and give it some lovely sunlight too. Okay so now we have your uh, French lavender pot kit which we did actually have in the May kits and I've brought it back for the June kits it's just gorgeous and smells amazing and it, it just grows so beautifully. So we're adding in the gravel to your pot so this is again your um, slightly darker resin dipped um, terracotta pots. So after your gravel, gently take your plant out. And again, you might find it's big for your pot, but that's no problem because all we need to do is carve it down. So carving it with just a normal knife, like you've got a sort of steak knife here, just carve it just slightly into a point. Absolutely fine to cut root system because they just grow back. They just need a good old water and some nice sunlight to keep them happy. I'm going to take off the bottom inch as well. Now that should fit into our pot. Perfect. So then I will just add in some of the compost that you would have received in your kit, just to fill in the gaps around the edges. moss, some more of the bun moss here, and I'm going to mix that in with the moss in the gaps. So give your lavender water, like I said, every couple of days, depending on the weather. If it's really hot, it might need a, a, a daily drink. And it needs 
um, a really lovely amount of sunlight too. So um, if you're not keeping it outside, a kitchen window sill is perfect. That's where mine's been and it's done really well there. And there you have it, the French lavender pocket. And now for the white lavender pocket. So this is different to the trio in that it's just a single um, beautiful white lavender plant in one of our larger sort of resin dipped um, terracotta pots. It smells incredible and it's just starting to open. And it just adds something different, doesn't it, to the normal sort of purple lavender. Um, it's a bit more unusual. Um, so yeah, I hope you love them. But we'll start by adding in the gravel that's in your kit, just at the bottom, just a, a little bit, not too much, probably a centimetre or two's worth. And then remove gently your plant from your pot. Okay. And add that in, and as you'll see, you'll need to use a decent amount of, uh, of your compost that's in your kit around the edges. So you just start adding that in and then compacting it down so that there's not any sort of air pockets. So give it a good squish down the sides. tidiest of jobs so you may you may find doing this in the garden favourable over your kitchen okay so that's the lavender potted up and now we'll add in our fun moss which just sits around the edge Smells so beautiful. It's got that really lovely, calming lavender scent. But then it smells, I think, the white lavender smells also quite sort of um, minty, as well as the sort of typical lavender smell that we all know. But yeah, it smells beautiful. Okay, so after the bun moss, I'm going to add in some sphagnum moss. So this will need watering, as with the other pockets, every sort of two days, weather dependent. If it's really hot, you might need a daily water, but just making sure you're watering the plant. So aim for sort of around here rather than um, watering the moss, because if you water just the moss, in the hope that it will, it will go through, it doesn't usually drain through. So what you'll find if, if your plant dies, you might find that you'll, you think, oh, but the moss is damp. And then you go to sort of throw it away or even to hope, by, hope it might survive by planting it in the garden, then you find that the soil is bone dry. And that's because you've probably, um, you know, understandably just been watering um, the moss rather than the, the soil. So an important thing to note. And there we have it, your white lavender pot kit, smelling and looking beautiful. So there you have it, that's all of our pot kits done for June. Um, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Really, really hope that you enjoy making them, putting them together. Um, as ever, if you have any questions, please let me know, just send me a DM or email me. And I'd love to see your pictures as always, um, so do tag me in those on Instagram and uh, yeah, I hope you have a lovely time potting your kids up.